when you see a big buying climax like that, and you haven't, this is back to the up now, we're in a downtrend here, we're, sh we're shooting straight down, we're retracing back up, and what happens here? The, the final leg of this starts getting that vertical look, right? What do you think most, who, who is most of that buying right in there? It's absolutely the public. Who do you think is selling into that? Exactly, professionals. You've got a big buying climax on what we're referring to as a high density climax. So it's very high volume, but it's so high that even when you divide it by the range of that wide ranging bar, it's still the highest volume per range. Volume divided by the range, it's the highest volume per range of the past however many bars we have here, probably 15 or 20. So what does that mean? At a high, very high volume per range is what? It's a sign of hitting supply. Does it mean the market's gonna turn there? Well, no, but it does mean that you've hit a lot of supply at a high or a lot of demand at a low. Doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to turn there, but you have a, a greater likelihood of it turning there than a bar or an area where you don't have that. And what else do you notice about this swing high? Look to the left. You see my line at 61? We didn't actually tick out these highs back here, did we? So a big buying climax on high density, high volume per range without breaking the previous swing highs. Okay, so that means you can safely assume that the majority of this is not people getting stopped out necessarily, right? What do the public tend to do with their stops? They tend to trail it behind every swing high on the way down, trail it behind every swing low on the way up. But anyhow, you haven't broken a swing high back here, so you're likely not running stops. So when you see something like that without breaking these prior highs, chances are you're putting in a little corrective swing high. Now, do we have any areas for uh, supply there? All right, so that's the low. This is the low before the high. This is the most often overlooked and most important swing uh, that people just simply fail to draw from. The hardest part for a lot of people is determining what swing to choose. Now, most of them are pretty obvious to me. I mean, this is obviously one that you want to connect to, right? Until you break completely out of it, and then you just delete it, or you leave the warning lines in there. This is obviously a swing you want to connect to, right? This may be one, but this surely is a swing that you want to draw your market geometry to, right? This is the one that gets overlooked. So here we've got 60. We got the top of that channel, a little bit higher at 67. We've got the center median line intersecting it. So it would be symmetrical right there, but it looks like, um, well, let's see. So we're already there, right? All right, well, I'm gonna go ahead and enter right there then. Is it 40 minutes? I did say a minimum of 40. Yeah, it's over an hour, so that's perfect. All right, so I'll enter one here. Right there. And this one I can have a tight stop on. So I don't need more than, yeah, maybe it goes to 67, 68. Eh, I'll give it 10 ticks. But not more than that. That's all I need on that. 10 ticks. And then at this point, what do I want to do? Well. I've got between 60 and 67. That's the center median line, that's the channel. I'd like to maybe try to trade it down to the bottom of the channel. Um, but this is a smaller retracement, so I'm not gonna try to get a moon trade out of it. You know, I'm not gonna try to trade to the dome. I'm just gonna get what I can out of it, maybe break that low. 
So I'll put my first target right there at that lower median line, which is at what, 10? So I'll put that one at 10, yeah. Okay, now I pause it and then I scroll forward. Looks like it's getting some trouble. All right, you got a little, little tiny bit of demand. I mean, it's nothing to worry about. Not yet. You got a little bit more. That would look a little funny to me. I'd be worried a little bit, but at this point, I would stand up and go walk outside and uh, shake it off, shake it off. Okay, it's starting to come on down. This is the kiss goodbye line. So we've broken up above that, pulled back to it. Let's see if we can go right through it. Nope, we got a reversal up off of it. Okay, there we go. Yeah, that's a big extreme churn bar here. It's a two bar pattern, but it's not a real, it's not a proper climax. Uh, it's increased volume. Let me blow this up. It's increased volume to the downside, that big blue bar, that's a selling climax. Uh, but it's not a proper climax because it's not at the end of a move. You know, a climax is like the last part of the move. And um, this is just turning back down. So this is, I'm not 100% not sure what we're gonna call this in Ninja 8. <clears throat> Excuse me. Hmm. Sorry but I'm thinking like a leading climax we've talked about or uh, like an impulse bar or resumption of the trend kind of a thing. I'm not sure what to name it, but that's basically what that is. It's a resumption of the trend. It's like a leading climax. So I'm not really worried as much about this sort of two bar pattern here. True, it is a huge amount of volume and you are finding support on this median line. I'm not even sure what that's from actually. Uh, it's the same one from back here. So it doesn't look like we're even using that one anymore. All right, I'm gonna take this one off at uh, 10, right? Oof. I've, uh, I would want to be out of one contract right there on that. But I've got my target at 10 already at these multiple areas coming together. So let's see if we can't. Oh. Okay, finally. Yeah, see, there was the close. I don't necessarily like, I mean, if I'm up big, like I am in this case, um, that's the crude oil close at 130 central. So that can be a pretty volatile move. All right, now we're, okay, there we go. Whew. Right here, I would definitely I would definitely close right there. Show the last low before the high thing. Yeah, sure. Let me uh, let me give you an example then. Looks like probably five waves up or maybe a big ABC or something, whatever. But if we can start to take this low out, then maybe we'll get a lower high kind of a thing, right? So if we do that, okay. Yeah, we've done it at this point. I would draw from this low. This is the low before the high. Now it looks like it's not done going down yet. We haven't even used that lower median line, so we're probably gonna make, yeah. So once we start making that low right there, that's when this becomes, when this is actually a 
in this case from a, the low before the high and it's moving lower and lower and you're looking for a nice lower high, most of the time you're not going to get very many areas that are at least that, that would be sloping in favor of the trade, in favor of a short, meaning a down sloping area. Uh, you tend to not get very many of those after you've just put in a really major swing high and you're just beginning that first descent. So to catch that first lower high, that low before the high becomes very, very important. And I think uh, most people just kind of overlook it. Uh, right here, you've got a couple, right? You've got, you've got this little one before the low, I mean. So this is the, the low. So this is the high before the low. But you've also got, yeah, maybe that one. This is, this is the, the major issue with this method is when you do have a lot of this chop back here, back and forth, it's like, well, which one do I use? You know, you could keep dragging it back and back and back. And then you just get a lower and lower channel and you get stopped and stopped and stopped. But oftentimes it's, it's pretty clear, you know, it's not always like this where you get this chop, but those are the three main ones that you would have to choose from here. So if we were going to stop, you know, I would draw from here to there. Well, there's your, you know, almost perfect higher low there, right? Well, that's pretty nice. What about up to here? Yeah, you didn't even have time to think about it. It just went right through it. So you could use that next one, but I wouldn't. In this case, it did work for that low right here. <laughs> That's actually perfect. That's funny. I love how I said that, and then it works perfectly. That's a perfect symmetrical move right there. I remember this one now. Yep, and then it goes up, does a lower high, and then goes right through all this. And then I drew to this one, and I think it goes right through that one. Let me see. All right, so at this point, I'm looking for a lower high, right? So I'm using that high before the, or low before the high to the most recent swing low, which we all just saw was the same thing in reverse. That one right there, perfectly, perfectly. So that's clear area of demand. And then it, oh, see, it just barely goes up. It goes right through it. Okay, now I'm using that low. Aha, now we've used the lower median line. So now I'm thinking, well, this is confirmed. This is a good channel. We've got also a rejection from the midline of that channel. You see? And again, right here. So now I want to see it go up through that. And hopefully, I don't know that it will, but hopefully it'll make it to up in here. And that's where I would want to short this. It may not make it. It doesn't always do it. But that is your, um, that's your, your safest and best spot for a um, major swing high. Now this one here, you see this channel, right? This is the, the next big upsloping channel. You've got demand off of that midline, breaks it a little bit here, and then it pulls back to the underside of it. That's like a kiss goodbye of the midline kind of a thing. It like uh, breaks right through it and then pulls. Well, it finds support on it, goes up, then breaks right through it and then pulls back to it. So didn't quite happen the way that I wanted it to in this example, but you see what happened here? So this is a larger swing, which I would probably have drawn maybe on this chart, but probably on a larger chart. And this is the same thing in reverse. So what is this? This is the, the, the big high before the low. I think it, yeah, it was coming down. So that's perfect. Yeah. That's your high before the low, right? So this is the same thing in reverse. 
and you're just doing this all the time on every chart. But of course, you know, it, it takes some getting used to. Using multiple time frames properly is not an easy thing to learn, but uh, once you have done it and you do this historical analysis over and over and over, like, you know, at least an hour a day, then you see this sort of thing over and over and you get comfortable with it and then you're able to do it very easily and quickly. And uh, what do you want to bet? It's the bottom of this downsloping channel there too. If not on the tick chart, then probably on the five minute. And it is perfectly symmetrical. I mean, this is market geometry. This, I can show you example after example after example every single day. Every single day. But it's such a useful tool and using this, forcing yourself to use it, is really going to benefit you. This is how you get better trading. You don't get better trading staring at the screens and taking random trades. That's the most counterproductive thing you could possibly do, especially when you're learning. You don't, uh, you, your time would be better served. You would be better served. Your time would be better spent if, as you're learning, you completely disconnect from the data feed. Don't even watch the live markets. Don't even try to trade in SIM. Please don't try to trade in a live account. Just do this bar by bar by bar, screenshot after screenshot after screenshot. Document as much stuff as you can and um, do as much bar by bar work as you can, preferably bar by bar, not market replay, so that you can go through as many consecutive days as possible and uh, you know, log your trades with this and do that over and over. Screenshot the ones that worked out, open them up every so often, flip through them as fast as you can, get that visual imprint in your mind, do the same thing with the losers. And um, that is by far the fastest way to see improvement in trading, regardless of what you may hear or what you may think about you know, screen time and practice. Yeah, screen time and practice, but the right kind of screen time and practice. All right, so let's scroll forward. I got to add back that delete all button also deletes the chart sync buttons, which I do not want it to do ever again. So I turn that off. Okay. Yeah, this next day, uh, we'll just do this next day and then we'll call it a morning here. Afternoon, I guess. Three hours? Whew. Okay, sorry guys. Let's, let's get on with this here. Okay, we're coming into the morning on the 28th. Well, it looks like we've had a major low, obviously. Look at that. What do I say about these two bar patterns? Man, you see them all the time here recently. It's crazy. Look at that. Big, huge selling climax followed by a churn bar. An extreme density churn bar there. That's another reason I love the five minute chart so much. And there you have the same thing, but you have three churn bars back to back. That's a huge one, 730% relative volume. Yeah, so that's, that's looking like a major low. But you see what's happening here. I'm sorry, that's the 28th, yeah. Okay, yeah, so we have a strong move down. There's no chance of making it to the bottom of that channel. Um, well, I mean, there is, but that's clearly not what gave us support here, right? Now, 
So this is the difference. I'm gonna show you the difference between the tick chart and the minute chart. This is the low before the high right here. All right, there's at least an area there. Now, yeah, I remember this in real time. I kept going back and forth. What's the, what's the best one to use, this one or this one? And um, because this is such a strong buying climax, do you use the extreme candle, or sorry, the extreme of the candle, the wick, or the highest closing price? When it's a very fast move and you have a big wick, I always use the highest closing price. Okay, but that's a little bit of a, a nuance that some people have a problem with initially, but um, after you do it and see it enough, it, it you know, it, it's something you can pretty easily prove. Um, so that is a very fast buying climax there with a couple of big wicks. So using the highest closing price is not uh, unreasonable and then it lines up quite a bit better here at the low yeah right but maybe that's form fitting it okay maybe that's me just thinking that this stuff works but it doesn't actually work and I'm stupid but here you've got a couple of pretty nice looking you got a nice swing low there. You got one here. You got one here. Meh. That's the major one there. All right, so in this case, what am I gonna do? If I'm looking for a low, which highs and lows am I gonna pick? Well, I'm gonna pick the most obvious ones, obviously. From high to high. Now what do I do in this case? Do I use that widest excursion point? Do I use the widest perpendicular move? Or do I actually use the end of the pattern, which is the lowest low? I would definitely use the lowest low there. Okay, now then what happens? Then what do we see in this case? Well, where did support come in? This is the difference between the tick chart and the minute chart. So remember on the, <clears throat> on the minute chart, this part here was basically straight down. But of course, it's longer and more drawn out during the morning session on a tick chart because these bars plot faster, right? Because it's based on number, total number of transactions, not time. So few number of bars in the overnight, large number of bars during the day session, and they create different sloping charts, both of which are very useful. In this case, it's the tick chart that gives you the perfect couple of areas. You've got every single swing high on the way down coming in on that lower median line, even that crazy back and forth move there, and here and here, you see? So chances are we'll probably put in a low right there as well. Looks like it, yeah. You see? So that's market geometry and we can, I can show you example after example after example of this stuff. I mean, it's not difficult to prove by any means. Just surprising, more people don't use it. All right, so that's what's happening at this low. Now, let's see, what are we looking for then? If we've put in a low that looks that good, um, this is two in the morning. Kind of looking like it may already be done, huh? to the downside. We would really need a much larger chart to really determine that. We 
which I don't think we'll do, but we'll just kind of forget about bias for now and just take the next couple of uh, areas that come together in the market geometry. But here you've come down to right there, you see it? This is the low of the 28th, early in the morning. You've come down to the bottom of that channel to this high. That's not the highest high though. This is actually the highest high. And that channel is quite a bit further down. It's about, well, it's not quite a bit, but at that point, maybe 30 ticks, 40 ticks. So we're, you know, if we could get a nice correction back up to a perfect area, I would think that that would be worth a short. You're in a pretty strong down move for the past week. Right, we're talking about a Thursday, I think, right? Talking about a Wednesday, yeah. So for the past few days, uh, all right, so that's the major high back here. Obviously, I mean, that's a huge uh, retracement swing high there. That's the major, major retracement high before this major low that was a slightly higher low, okay, on the tick chart. So I would have a larger tick chart usually to be able to show this, you see? So we haven't quite hit that at this point. But now let's just forget about bias and much larger areas. Let's just purely look for the next area of support or resistance. So you've seen this one that I drew here using the actual lowest low. All right, now I could draw a couple of different ones here, right? What's the one that we were just talking about a minute ago? High before the low, low before the high, right? So that would be this one here. This is the high before the high, that's the penultimate high. This is the low between the two. That's the ultimate low on the right edge of the chart. Let me, I'm just gonna delete these. I don't want too many lines on here to where it confuses. Let's see if I can disable some of these other things. Okay. There we go. So that's the perfect channel to the downside there. This is the low before the high. That's coming in up in here. All right, now the most recent one that we could draw. I mean, just looking back to the left, what, what do you see? You've got a major low here, right? First major low to the left. That's the ultimate low. What do we see coming in? It's basically the same slope as the downsloping channel. So the next major area of resistance is what? Looks like right there, right? See? Yep, exactly. Auto line, the channel right there. All right, so that's at least to the upside. That's our next major area of resistance or supply. We'd love to see a big buying climax go into right there. <clears throat> and, um, with a big, fast, sharp move right into it without breaking the high or break the high and then get that kind of rounded uh, divergence sort of a move as uh, it stops these guys out and then, you know, they kind of take it up and sideways as they build a short. All right, so that's what we're looking for right there. First thing to the upside. It's only 3 a.m. at this moment. I connect from low to low here. I'm gonna get rid of these median lines too so there's not a bunch of garbage everywhere. Okay. And that's the first channel to the upside 
on the minute chart at 65. Okay, I mean, we can even throw some fibs on here if you want. And you've got a fib confluence at um, 6515, but the first one is at 6485. So those are your two fib confluence. You see the overlap in the fibs there? You've got this one, 6485. And then you've got this one at 6515. Everybody see that? It's only two spots uh, where the fibs are overlapping, other than right here, but that's the actual swing high. So, okay, and then, I mean, I could do one more. There you've got the 138.2 right around here and the 161.8, but let's just get rid of that one. I mean, I could even do a volume profile and look for Whereas the VWAP or the point of control, well, that's actually much higher. So maybe the VWAP from the lower high. That's coming in right now at 65. So maybe by the time we get there, it would be at 64.85. So let's just see. Let's now delete all of these since I've got them marked out. Okay, so now let's actually get into the morning. Looks like we've got a higher low here we could draw from. 6485 is just a little bit higher at the top of that upsloping channel. which is the same channel I could draw on the five minute. Yeah, we would wanna make it to the top of this area. So I'll draw that same channel on the tick chart, hide all these warning lines. And remember if this, if this is too crazy looking for you, this is all going to be in an automated service here in the next month or so where I'd be doing all this myself and exporting it. So that's 83. You've almost ticked out that prior high to the left here, but we still haven't made it to 90. 90 is what we want to make it to. So it looks like we're just about ticking out that high. You do have that two bar pattern right there. See, I would have to reload the chart again to, um, not be able to see those divergence lines. So I clearly can see the divergence. All right, but that's what I would love to see actually at this high. So here I'm thinking, well, that's an A expanded flat B. I'm looking for five waves up. I'd like to see one, two, three. We've got three now, I think. And then four and five for the C wave. And then we'd be at the top of this nice upsloping channel, the top of this beautiful downsloping channel, which would be symmetrical at the 90, 89 or 90. Yeah. And then the fib confluence is 85. The first one, the next one was what? Um, 65.15. So I'd like to see, now we're coming into it. See, you're, you're making what I want to see to confirm it right now. I would take a short right there for sure, just based on the volume. But see, we're no longer touching uh, that upsloping channel. So I'd like to make it back into that and then actually touch the downsloping channel on the tick chart, right? The only one that we're actually touching is that downsloping channel on the five minute but the really beautiful one, and that's a small one. See, that's a much smaller channel there on the five minute between these two lows here, you see? But the big downsloping channel is a little higher at 89, 
as is all of these other areas on the tick chart. It's a little difficult to see when I put three charts on the same monitor, but when I'm flipping around uh, during the trading room, it's a little, little easier to see everything. All right, so at that point, I don't quite have a churn bar just yet. I do have a little tiny buying climax, but no real uh, very high volume per range just yet, which is really what I want to see. At this point, I would start to think that I've missed it. I really would. But we haven't quite hit the down sloping major areas on that tick chart, you see? Boom, that's it right there. At this point, I'm getting in right there. I, I can see that it looks like it goes up a little higher here, but that's me right there, I'm in. I'm in right there. And then my stop is just a bit behind that 88, maybe 10 ticks, nine ticks, eight ticks right there, and then I pause it. And then let's keep scrolling here. And it does go back and double top right there, underside of that again. So now you're touching all of the major areas, you see? You've got this perfect, let's just, we don't even need this one at this point. You've got the perfect Downsloping channel. I mean, this is not rocket science as to which which are the major swings, you know, which are the major areas where supply and demand came in. This is clear demand because it goes right up into that high, right? This is demand here because it does do a retracement, but this is what has actually um, given us a deeper retracement and is the ultimate major low on the immediate right edge. And then to the left of that, that's the low before the high, right? So it's not like I'm, you know, picking some strange pivots or something here. So that is your perfect area. This is how supply and demand works. That's where supply is going to come in next. That's where you can safely assume that supply will come in next, you see? Does that make sense, you guys? So many people teach supply and demand in so many different ways. And um, I mean, you can, you can prove these things, you know? Whether they work or not, it just takes time. Which is something we don't have very much of. Ooh, looks like it's going to go all the way back up and stop me out, actually. Nope. We got a little two-bar pattern there, a little buying climax, followed by a churn bar. Sign of supply coming in as it retested the high, and now it's starting to head down. All right, so that would be the first tiny little area for support. If this thing is going to do, let, let, let's say like a, excuse me, like a um, little, I don't know, one, two, three, four, and then go up into a fifth wave, this would be the first and best spot for that to happen. So you'll always hear me talk about that when I'm in a trade, like this is the next, if, I, if I'm wrong, this is the best spot where I'll be wrong from. It's where the warning line of the median line set intersects the baseline. That's a really good spot for a tiny little retracement low right there. All right, so at that point, I'd be, I'd be worried for sure. I would definitely be worried, but this is such a beautiful spot here. It really is. And then let's see. Yep, it's exactly the VWAP from that high here. You see that? 
exactly the VWAP right there. That's the volume weighted average price. So you've got a lot going for it, quite a bit. Right there. All right, well, what is the, what is the next area? where we want to think about getting out of this. This is about a mess here. All right, let's just go ahead and delete that one. Next area where I would be wanting to trade down to would be the bottom of this channel or this upsloping lower median line. This is the last little nuance thing I'm going to talk about here. <clears throat> mm. No, whatever. This is the um, upsloping lower median line. Let me hide everything. I guess I shouldn't do all this, but this is the penultimate low here. And that's the ultimate low. So when you draw the baseline from low to low and the median line is upsloping, you have a higher likelihood of putting a higher low in. Okay. And that would tend to be the place where it would happen. It's not always, and it doesn't happen. I wouldn't say it even happens more than 40% of the time, but it does happen enough to where it's, it's something we talk about and we see a lot. Okay. So that's the first place. If it's, you connect low to low, those median lines are upsloping. You've got a higher likelihood of putting in a higher low, especially if you've made the kind of C wave looking low that we've made here. All right. If it's sloping down, you have a higher likelihood of making a lower low. So this would be the first area where I would be uh, basically looking for any reason to get out of the trade right here. And it just so happens that when I connect these two areas, these two swings together, those areas are not more than about three or four ticks apart. So, and I've even got a center median line coming in right where they all three intersect right there, you see. So right at 64.50, I'm uh, basically looking for any reason to get out. Not necessarily trying to hold for a major low, although I could do that for the second contract, okay? So that's 64.50. So that'll be my first spot. Yeah, yeah I just, I don't like having three charts on the same screen. I'm terribly unused to it, not used to it. All right, so let's scroll bar by bar here forward. Yeah, you're finding a lot of support there. It does look like it's about to turn right back up. Up oh, and then it fails. And now we're really moving down out of that, uh, that swing high there. If I want to get out of one contract, um, at this, at a potential higher low, then I would hold the second contract. Uh, to try to make it to that lower median line there. The opposite of this center median line, you see? How difficult is it to under, for those of you that are brand new to this stuff, how difficult do you find this? Is it like learning Greek? Listen to me talk about this? Or is it actually understandable? And does it make any sense? 
took me a lot of time to put all this stuff together. Of course, I wasn't, you know, this is all based on the work of others. Well, some of it is, a lot of it is, the market geometry part is anyway. Right, so if we're doing a lower high, this is a pretty good looking, that looks pretty good. It's a big buying climax followed by an extreme density churn bar. Yeah, it's a 90 second chart, but that looks pretty good for a little swing high there. Yeah, that's right, they did invent geometry. The Greeks. Okay, there we start to get a push back down. It's also this down sloping upper median line from back here. No, it's actually the actually the useful one. It's actually this one. From high to high to high right here. So that's the down sloping upper median line. So chances are we'll turn down from there. I'm looking to take one off at 64.50. That was, um, uh, to be safe, I would take one off right there. Let's say I didn't get a very good fill. Take one off right there and then pause it again. Okay, I think that's what I was doing before where I was messing up. If I do the custom exit as the final exit, it's all good. All right, so now I've taken one off and I'm gonna try to hold down to uh, 64.33 if possible. Otherwise, uh, yeah, it's the same spot. So that's from low to low right there. And that's where the center median line is intersecting them, right there. So that's where I'd love to hold it down to, but this is Wednesday, 28th. Yeah, it's the 28th and it's 8.35. So, you know, probably not the best idea to try to hold it uh, much further than where it's at right now, but let's just see if we can't get a little more out of it. All right, we've got an extreme churn bar, two bar pattern on the 90 second chart and uh, I'm done with that. Uh, William, yeah, if you, if you purchased the previous version, then all you need to do is sign into the website. Just sign into the website and then you'll see trade tracker there on the left after you sign in. No, it's all, it's all on here. You don't have to, he, he's already added you, sorry, he's already added all of your keys, your uh, machine IDs with the new uh, licensing. So all you have to do is import it. Mm -hmm. There is a little bit of a trick to the Ninja 8 version, but I think we'll be able to make an installer here uh, on Monday. That'll make it a lot easier but you do have to download a couple of um, you do have to download a couple of DLLs first, but there, there are instructions on how to do that. And if you guys need help, just write in and we'll help you do it. You know, there was one more beautiful swing high here that we could have done. And um, I just saw it. Well, I mean, I saw it earlier too, but look at that one. That's another example of the low before the high, the high before the low. You see it? So if I hide all of this, just draw from the low before the high to the low. There it is right there. I imagine that's probably the VWAP from here. Yep, just a few ticks away from it. And it's the low volume node. 
well, it's the underside of this swing low is what it is. You see? And it's the 138.2 extension, which so many C waves are. It's the most common one for sure. All right, you guys. Have a good one. Bye, everyone.